Hi there, this is Evan here, I'm Marlene Dinarios, Evan Der Milner from the Latinum Institute. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about a whole new section that I've developed at Latinum. And this is something which is called shadowing. Shadowing is a language technique that was once very well known, very popular and was used very widely. Uh, if you want to, for example, go back to the time of Comenius when he was discussing his Vestibulum, the introductory text that he wrote for six-year-olds, his idea was that students would first come to school as very young students, aged five, and they would learn their vernacular version of his little text, the Vestibulum, which was a little book um, in very short sentences describing some basic vocabulary. And then once the students knew the text in their own language, they would then start to study it in the Latin, firstly by reading or having it read aloud in their language while looking at the Latin. This is called shadowing. And what happens in shadowing is that you, your eyes are on the, the text in the language that you want to learn, your target language, um, and you're listening to a translation of it. There's another reverse method as well called shadowing, where you listen to the text read aloud in the target language and you look at the translation. And both of these methods, both of them were used by Comenius and recommended by him. A lot of textbooks and student level books were written aimed at this method, particularly interlinear texts, which were very popular and they go back a very long way. Um, the first ones that I know about were published for Hebrew and Latin with the Hebrew and the Latin interlinear above it for Bible study. Um, Ariel Montanus's examples were, um, are very famous. I'm sure there are more ancient versions than that, but that's one of the uh, earliest texts of that kind that I'm aware of. In the 1700s, quite a large number of these were published and a pioneer or a promoter of these in England, at least, was uh, John Sterling, followed on by Mr. Hamilton, who published a whole series of interlinear Latin texts. So what I've done at Latinum is I've produced some of these materials in the shadowing section. We're working our way through Celsus on medicine at the moment using a Hamiltonian text. Celsus is an interesting choice. His Latin is very good. Uh, he wrote in a style that is compared favorably to the style of Cicero. So his, his Latin is, is excellent, but the subject matter is not subject matter that most students of Latin think they're going to, nowadays anyway, be reading, which is all about medicine. Uh, in fact, the, the last section um, I did is all about uh, finding out the signs that indicate your patient is about to kick the bucket. It's all interesting stuff. Um, the sections on new diseases actually are very interesting. Um, with the current COVID crisis going on, if you read Celsus, you'll see that the tools that modern medics have available to them and the analytical tools that they are using are pretty much the same as were used by a doctor in Roman times. It's all, uh, we haven't really gone very far when it comes to hitting a new disease. And of course, new diseases did arise and Celsus talks about new diseases and how doctors approach a, a new disease. Uh, and pretty much what doctors are doing now, trying to deal with this coronavirus, um, is following the advice in Celsus. In fact, I would highly recommend that modern doctors read it. It was once an obligatory text and you couldn't pass the examinations to become a doctor, in England at least, right through until the 1800s, unless you knew this text, which is why Hamilton made the interlinear translation to help students study the text to prepare themselves for their medical examinations. Anyway, that text is now being produced. What I do is I read the text very slowly in Latin. And then while I'm reading slowly in Latin, you are listening to me. And then you have the text open in front of you. It's a PDF file. You can download it freely from Google Books. 
And while you're listening to me, your eyes are on the English translation. Now, what Hamilton has done is the syntax has been slightly rearranged so that the English translation isn't nonsense. Because if you were to follow the original Latin um, style of Celsus, you wouldn't be able to have a running parallel translation. And often the translation has got a lot of brackets with uh, text, etc., to flesh things out to help. So when that happens, I pause a little bit in my reading to give you time to look at the English brief commentary. Um, so that's Celsus. So that's from Latin to English. Then from English to Latin, I've also recorded a number of things. I've recorded the English for um, the Scholar's Guide, which is a text by John Clark, uh, introductory text for learning Latin. And so it contains lots and lots of basic sentences, which uh, get more and more complex. So I read the English, and then your eyes are on the Latin. And I've also done the same thing for the Sententiae Puariles. The Sententiae Puariles is a famous text, and it was used in schools for a long time, published for the first time um, by a Mr. Kuhlman, I believe, in the 1500s. The uh, edition that I have used is John Sterling's edition, um, which he made for home study and for use in schools. So I just read the English very slowly. I read each sentence aloud. They're all numbered. Number one, I give the translation. Number two, I give the translation. And then while I'm doing that, your eyes are on the Latin. And what this does is it helps you rapidly go through a text, build up your vocabulary, now, Sterling's text is interesting because the Latin is presented in three different ways. Well, two ways, and then the English translation. So at the top of the page, you have the Latin in its natural form, its idiomatic structure. And then you have two columns underneath that. One of those columns, the Latin has been moved around into the Ordo Verborum to follow the structure of the English. And the English maps out the Latin. And Sterling is very clever. He also alternates the words um, normal text, italics, normal text, italics. And the English does the same thing. So you can see what relates to what uh, very, very clearly. And once you've done the ordo verborum, then you are ready to look at the Latin in its idiomatic form. So that is shadowing. If you go to latinum.org.uk, you will find a link there to shadowing and you'll be able to see the texts that I have produced and I'm continuing to produce because I think this is a very valuable method, one that's overlooked. We have an enormous number of textbooks that we can make use of, but the textbooks themselves are pretty useless without the accompanying audio to help you use them. So at the moment, that's one of the things that I'm doing at Latinum. And uh, there are other, other things I've published today. Um, the first book of the Aeneid in the verse translation of Melmoth, uh, which is um, an 18th century verse translation of the Aeneid into quite pleasant English. Um, I've already published Connington's verse Aeneid. And so this is uh, the next one. I'm going to work my way through the various verse translations of the Aeneid and turn them into audiobooks for your general delectation. Um, these are very pleasant to listen to, um, but not so easy to read because the 17th century texts have these old typefaces and aren't necessarily so clear. So it's easier to listen to somebody read it than to read it yourself because these books haven't been republished for centuries. So that's it from me uh, for today, just uh, to let you know that uh, we have this new section at Latinum and a new website. So latinum.org.uk will lead you to a new website where everything is now in order, uh, beginners level, beginners plus level, intermediate level, intermediate plus level, advanced level, and the various other materials that are provided. Vale. Bye.